I want to welcome you back to The uh, Christian Atheist, and I hope that you have been enjoying going through this book by Craig Groeschel. Uh, today we're going to talk about the subject of church, and we're specifically going to be looking at Craig's chapter called, When You Believe in God, But Not in His Church. And uh, I'd like just to start off today by um, reading a short section from this chapter and talking a little bit with you, Pastor Dave, about this. He talks a little bit about, uh, in the early part of this chapter, about church. Um, and specifically, he talks about why often uh, there's a lot of Christians that aren't involved. And, and uh, I want to just read you this short section. He says, Christians from all denominations and walks of life shun the church these days. Many believe they don't sim- simply don't have time for it. In years past, Sunday morning meant church, followed by rest. But in our 24-7 world, Sunday is now just another weekday. Most stores and restaurants are open. Our kids' sporting events are in full swing. For some, Sunday is even a work day. For others, Sunday is the only day they can sleep or sleep in or do chores around the house. With so much going on, church has become, for many, a lower priority. You know, Pastor Dave, I'm conscious of the fact that, you know, when they've done surveys in our culture, just in America, and uh, they ask what religion people identify with, um, it's a huge number. Over 80% of people identify themselves as Christians. And yet, uh, we can see also, if we do surveys, mm-hmm on church attendance, that the vast majority of folks who are Christians also don't um, uh, either attend church or they're not really involved a church, in a church uh, in any significant way. And so I wonder if you could comment on why you think it is more people aren't involved in a church more. Um, Craig mm-hmm. talks about a few reasons in the book, but I wonder what your thoughts are on that. Great question, Stephen. And over the years, I have talked to people from time to time who will say things like what you just quoted, and that is the kids are playing soccer or the, it's my one chance to sleep in or have that second cup of coffee. <laughs> Oftentimes what I hear along with that is I can worship God in my own way. It's meaningful to me and that's all that's really necessary in my faith. When I talk to someone like that, I, I say, okay, well, well, how's that going for you? If you're worshiping God in your own way, are, are there ever times where you find yourself Uh, coming before God in humility and and taking an inventory of your life at that point and saying, Lord, I need to confess these places where I've turned away from you. I'm out of relationship with you. Does that happen when you worship God your own way? Does it happen when you worship God your own way that you're challenged by something in God's word, something you've never seen before, but something that God has said very clearly and it's very important for your life? Do you have those times where you're you're built up in the knowledge of who God is and what he expects of your life. And also, when you worship God your own way, do you find yourself being challenged to give of yourself and be a channel of God's love to others? Or do you just sort of kind of do whatever comes along, watch TV or maybe take a walk, whatever just happens to be the thing? I would say these ways are so important in our growth in our relationship with God to be challenged to grow in our faith, to confess our sin, to be a channel of God's love. Another reason I hear people say they don't go to church is because I'm just too busy. And it is true that Sunday in our culture is no longer a holy day. Now it's a holiday, a chance to do all those things that we can't do for ourselves and for our family during the week. But God intends it to be a holy day a day where we are restored in our spirit, a day where we're reconnected to God. And then people say, well, I don't go to church because it's not relevant. I go to church and nothing that they say seems to connect to the world I live in. And let me just say, there have been times in the church where we have made the gospel, this incredible message Hmm. that God loves the world. He gave his son to come into this world and to show us a new kind of humanity. And then he died so that we could grow into that and experience that and be forgiven and have this abundant life that God wants to call us to, where we can live life at full potential. What a great message. That's really worth getting excited about. And it is a sin to bore people with the gospel and to make it irrelevant. So it's a a tragedy when that does happen. But even beyond that, because none of us are going to present the message perfectly and there are going to be those subjects which not everybody considers to be the number one concern in their life, something that's on the front burner for them at this particular point. And if we come into God's house, 
with the attitude that we are full, we have everything we need apart from God, no matter how the message is presented, we're not going to receive it. Yeah, I think those are some really good reasons, Dave, about uh, why people aren't involved in the church. And um, I want to highlight another thing that Craig says in here that uh, I think is really important. He says this on page 220. Christian atheists believe in God, but not in his church because they think they don't need it. But have you ever considered, what if church really does need you? What if church really does need you? I think that's a good question. He says, if you're not ministering and using your gifts in the church, then something God wants done is being ignored. I wonder if you could uh, comment a little bit on this, Dave. Uh, Craig talks in, about in the book um, the important chapter in the Bible of 1 Corinthians 12, where the Apostle Paul talks about the church being the body of Christ and how the body of Christ is one body, but it has many different members. And those members bring together their unique gifts and their unique talents to make the church really built up and what it's supposed to be. And so I wonder if you could comment on um, how Craig talks about the church being the body of Christ and why it's important for everybody to be involved in the church and to use their gifts and to, to get plugged into to the body of Christ. Thank you, Stephen. You know, it's so sad to me when I see people having a, uh, a sense that they go to church just out of obligation. I love that verse from the psalm that says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We can be glad because when we come to the house of God, we find that our spirits are re-energized. I had a conversation with a woman a number of years ago, and she told me that she'd been away from church for a while, and again, she used the litany of, well, I, I want to sleep in, I want to have a second cup of coffee. And I just, in my own heart at that point, made the decision that any church I pastor, I really want to do everything I can to invite the people into the celebration of God's presence and to experience the renewal that he has. Because you see, when Monday morning rolls around, we need to remember we are Easter people. We don't go into the week just saying, I hope I can get through. I hope I can just uh, shuffle along. I can uh, get lost in the shuffle and shuffle along with the lost. God has an exciting purpose for our life. And if we don't see purpose, if we don't see the vision, we're like a a basketball player dribbling down the court with no goal. We're like a football team driving down the field not knowing where the goal line is. We need that in our lives. We need daily doses of that. We need weekly doses. And that's what church can be when we come into God's house and we experience once again that we are his people. We're forgiven and loved and we're called to share that love and to declare that love with those around us, those we meet with, and those who are in our family. So to have our life re-energized, and you know, whatever we magnify in our life will, will define our life. So for example, if you magnify your concerns, that turns into fear. That's not a really positive way of living. If you magnify a need, it becomes a greed. And that brings all kinds of conflict in our life. If we magnify a pleasure, it becomes an addiction. And again, it pulls us down. God wants to lift us up. He wants to give us not a letdown, but a but a lift. He wants to encourage us. So when we say we magnify God rather than our problems, we find that we approach it with a positive, joyful spirit. We come to church so we can encourage one another. There's a wonderful verse in Galatians that says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, the Bible is a pretty thick book. There are over a thousand pages in the Bible. I really appreciate it when we come across something in the Bible that says, if you do this, you're fulfilling all that God wants. Here it says, if we bear one another's burdens, we're fulfilling the law of Christ. If you consider yourself a disciple of Christ, then certainly you want to do the one thing that fulfills all that Christ is calling you to do, and that is to bear the burdens of others. So we come to church not only to receive and to be built up and to find a new purpose and hope, but also that we can share and reach out to one another. Jesus said, by this all men you shall know that you are my disciples, by the love you have for one another. We come together, we sing together, we encourage each other in the singing because as we sense God leading in the music, our spirit is stirred in a new and fresh way. We can pray for one another as prayers are being offered. As we meet one another afterwards, we can be encouraged and see that others are walking in Christ along with us. And then we have the opportunity when we come together to serve. Yes, serve on Sunday morning, but also serve as we go throughout the week and also 
in the ways that the church is reaching out into the community. We come together to find our place so we can be a part of the body of Christ. I'm reminded of a story where a man was going through the line and he shook the pastor's hand and the pastor looked him in the eye and said, God wants you to be a part of the Lord's army. And the man looked down and then barely was able to look the pastor in the eye and said, I am in the Lord's army, pastor, but I'm in the secret service. (laughs) Well, God wants more than just secret service Christians. He wants us to link arms and to be a team so we can show the world that there is an alternative to the doom and gloom and the negative politics and the downward economy. Because you see, even when the economy goes down, we as God's people need to be going up in our desire to serve and reach out and meet a need so they can see the difference that Christ makes in our life. Oh, there's a lot of reasons to come to church. And all of them not only bless us, but even when we give ourselves away to others, it boomerangs back into our life in a way that's positive and brings deeper joy. Appreciate that, Dave. I'd like to uh, just close our session today by talking about a story that Craig shares with us at the end of the chapter here. And he talks about another story where a man was coming through the line and talking to his pastor after the service. And uh, this man came through the line and uh, he shook the pastor's hand and he said, the answer is yes. Now, what's the question? He said to the pastor, the answer is yes. Now, what's the question? And the pastor wasn't really sure what to think about this, and he didn't know what this guy was talking about, and so he asked the man, and this is what the man said. He said, Pastor, about six months ago, I was in an adulterous relationship. My life was spiraling dangerously out of control. I was at risk of losing my marriage and my family, even my job. In the middle of my storm, a mess I had made myself, you preached a message about Christ's power to change a life. It seemed like every word you preached was just for me. That evening, I agreed to go to a small group with my wife. I was terrified everyone would see right through me, but I was shocked when they embraced me. They invited me to meet that same Jesus you described. That night, I invited Christ to change my life, and boy, did he ever. Today, my marriage and family are better than they've ever been before. God used our church to change my life. God used our church to change my life, this man said. He took a deep breath. He regained his composure and continued... So, Pastor, that's what I want you to know. My answer to you is yes. Whatever you need, anywhere, anytime, my answer is yes. Now, what's the question? What I want to ask you today as we close as a final thought here is when it comes to church, what has your answer been? Has your answer been no? Has your answer been some of the time? Have you said to God, some of the time, maybe, God, I can be part of your church? Or has your answer been to God, I will give you whatever you ask of me, God, wherever you are calling me to be involved in your church, I will serve you in that way. The question we want to ask ourselves today is, what if we all said yes and we were all willing to give up of ourselves to God and to be part of the body of Christ and to think what might be able to happen? I hope you've enjoyed some of our discussion, and I hope that you and your group have a productive discussion as well.